Ladies and gentlemen, the name is Silent Mike. Two Ks on Instagram, two Ks on Twitter. Find me at Silent Mike, M I K K E, two on Twitch. We're streaming almost every day, Monday through Friday. Hours and hours of fun if you want to come chill. Today, before we dig into it, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Today, I want to talk about why powerlifters are more jacked than bodybuilders. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go in the comments and troll out saying you're so jacked and lean and cut and shreds life and you're not a powerlifter, let's dig in why. I think that there's still a mask of too much old school, not science, and not just good training happening in the general population for people that want to look good. You know, people say they bodybuild, although they don't compete. And so we're gonna go off the basis that a powerlifter is anyone that focuses on strength and a bodybuilder is anyone that goal or focuses on trying to look good in the gym, not the competitive scene. I'm talking about the average lifter that has one of those goals in mind. And now why I think the average lifter, the average power lifter is more jacked than the average bodybuilder is, as we all know, the leading factor to strength and hypertrophy, muscle gain, is progressive overload. Now, the most basic progressive overload, the most basic form of progressive overload obviously is just lifting more weight. Last week, if I lifted 100 pounds, next week I wanna lift 105, then 110, 120. Now, as we know, those things do run out. You can't just lift more weight every week. Our body does not adapt that quickly. So what do we do? We do three sets of five at 95, then we do four sets of five at 95, five sets of five at 95, and then maybe eventually we'll be able to do uh, three sets or one set of five at 105, and we progress that way. Either more volume, more sets, more reps, or more weight, progressively again over time, will build the most amount of muscle volume. Progressive overload with volume is the number one driver in hypertrophy and strength. Now this old school thought still reigns supreme when you come to the regular gym and this popped in my head as I was looking around uh, at the commercial gym I train at here and there. I'll go in there, I'll plug in, I'll get a little circuit bodybuilding hypertrophy workout for myself and I look around the gym and see what everybody's doing. There's a small crew in there that I could tell is following some type of program and squat bench dead, the compound movements, overhead press, whatever it might be. And I can tell they have a little bit more muscle on them. A lot of these people are in their 20s, maybe college kids. It's near a college campus here in Sacramento. And then I could see another crowd that similar age or, or varying ages, it almost doesn't matter, that are just going with 10 pound dumbbells till they get a pump and leave the gym. Now there are other, are other factors in muscle growth um, that do work, right? Time under tension, um, muscle damage, acute or uh, local muscle damage, right? Like the pump may play a factor in the hypertrophy over time, but the main driving factor is that progressive overload and volume. And so many of these people aren't focusing on their nutrition to gain large amounts of muscle. We have to get that progressive overload as well as some type of calorie surplus, even if it's small a calorie surplus consistently over time, rather than some of these people just aren't consistent outside of the gym with their sleep, hydration, and food. Um, where a power lifter, in my opinion, when you're focused in on performance, it's almost more of an ego thing where if you don't lift the, the right amount of weight weekly or more weight every month or every six months or every year, you're not progressing and you're gonna focus in on those things to make sure you progress. Where the other people are almost just walking zombies in my opinion, where they just go in, try to get a pump and then do whatever they want outside of the gym not thinking about it because they're not as aware as per, perhaps a performance athlete. Now a lot of these are speculations, a lot of these are just my opinions and blanket statements but I truly do believe that the average power lifter or the average strength athlete starts to Google and figure out where some of these programs are and all programs in a program for me means that there's, there's sets, reps, there's progression, there's a scheme with an end goal, not just random workouts. That's a big difference. That's another topic for another day in the fitness industry. That's a pet peeve of mine. A workout, people writing workouts is not programming. Programming has progression and leads us to a goal. So I think the average power lifter is more likely to research or follow a program, whereas another person just has a back day, bicep day, and all they do is try to annihilate or get a pump in those muscles, get a, a, a couple sets, a couple reps till they feel fatigued and then leave the gym. And that will end up spinning your wheels for years and years and years. How do I know? I've been there. And as soon as I started being consistent with my nutrition, even if it's not as perfect, it's just more consistent, and having some kind of progressive overload programming over time, with higher frequencies and higher volumes, you get more gains. The other thing in powerlifting, at least people that have some knowledge and do some research of powerlifting is the frequency, as I just mentioned. Majority of powerlifters will end up, if they do proper research of any nature, just a simple Google search, you'll end up squatting two to three times a week, deadlifting once or twice a week, 
benching two to three times a week, and that frequency again leads to protein synthesis and more volume, more progressive overload over time, where kind of this old school train of thought is still used by the masses, and it's not optimal for the majority of people, is training a body part a week, just one time a week, you're doing arms once a week, back once a week, legs once a week, and just trying to annihilate it or get a pump, that protein synthesis and volume is much lower if you're doing, even if you do uh, 50 sets of squats or lunges on one day, on Monday, on leg day, the dreaded leg day where you're dragging out the gym, compared to powerlifting where you're progressively overloading, you're squatting three times a week and maybe you're doing five sets each day, even if you're not doing accessories, it's bigger movements, they're more pure technique, they're more pure power, and they're doing more perfect reps each one of those sets rather than annihilating these muscle groups over here where things may be sloppy, you may, may, may not be getting the best or optimal muscle activation. Now I've talked about in many a video, you know the main differences in proper bodybuilding or powerlifting is really only exercise variation. In bodybuilding, you need to focus on every muscle group trying to make it symmetrical while still focusing in on volume and frequency. In a powerlifting, we only, in a powerlifting you only really need three, right? You need the squat, bench, and deadlift. Yes, some variations may help. Yes, some accessories, some isolation exercises may help, but the you could be a very good powerlifter and literally just squat bench dead potentially and the frequency will be up. But again, progressive overload in both may lead to a separate looking physique. Another question that popped up in my head or in my feed recently on Instagram or Twitter, I forgot, is just how our programs at Kaizen or general programs will make your body look. Now there's no necessarily a program, sets, reps, or exercise that will make your body look differently. Um, the only thing that will really make it look different is you can grow a muscle, you could shrink a muscle, or the genetics will choose how that muscle looks. The insertions, the bellies of the muscle, all those things. So an exercise or a program can't really choose how you're gonna look. It's mostly gonna be your genetics again. And then whether you grow muscle, burn fat, or just lose muscle potentially, depending on the exercise or your lifestyle. Overall, just some random thoughts that popped in my head that I think basis, and a lot of bodybuilders will say this too, the top guys will say that a basis of powerlifting, a basis of strength, a basis of knowing how to squat bench, deadlift, overhead press, bent over row, some of the basic big movements will help you long term to even go to the top levels of bodybuilding because then you can refine the movements and get into a preacher curl or uh, uh, you know if you can't overhead press and really build some shoulder strength some shoulder muscle uh, a lateral raise isn't going to put on that mass you need because the progressive overload you might be able to overhead press 185 pounds you're only going to lateral press or lateral raise 20 pounds 30 pounds so the progressive overload the stimulus on the muscle is going to be much greater with a press again the basic compounds always are going to do better especially for the natural lifter that's looking long term not only health wise um, but looking to be a better lifter and a performance athlete they both do mix well together the more strength you have the more volume you can handle the more muscle you will gain over time so moral of the story I don't care what your goals are. Your goals are your goals. My goals are my goals. You do you, me do me. But if you want to get better at whatever it is, looks, athletics, or strength of any nature, progressive overload is the name of the game. Slowly building volume and strength over time. I appreciate you guys. If you like this type of video, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Share with your friends. We're dropping new videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Vlogs coming soon. I got a deadlift competition coming soon. Maybe even daily videos coming soon. We're on Twitch every single night. Silent Mike, 2Ks, number two at the end. Someone stole my name. I'm out of here, guys. Appreciate you.